What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down good versus bad examples of wide receiver footwork off the line of scrimmage against a press coverage DB and what you guys could do and what you guys shouldn't do to be able to create separation off the line, okay? So I hope this helps you guys out, hope it improves your technical skills at the wide receiver position and gives you some insight on how we should be moving as a wide receiver. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you're in the off season and you want to know everything that you should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, broken down for you in the gym and on the field, check out that very first First link in the description below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. What you'll get access to is eight weeks of on-field wide receiver workout drills and in-the-gym wide receiver workout exercises. So we're going to give you eight weeks of each. Every single day is broken down to sets, repetitions, rest periods, and we include in two hours of instructional video content on all the field drills and picture examples of all the gym workouts. So check out that very first link below if you want a day-to-day, -day, daily drill, daily exercise, wide receiver workout plan. Let's get started with this video. So the one thing we love to talk about on this channel, especially, is we love to talk about stepping outside of a DB's frame and how that's going to be able to get you separation and how a DB is taught to stay disciplined, right? So a DB is taught to do a couple things. He's taught to watch your hips and he is taught to stay disciplined and try to mirror you. You hear DBs talk about it all the time, especially our DB coach. He talks a lot about mirroring guys, right? Like you want to mirror him. You want to shuffle with him. You never want to open up the gate too quick. You never want to get your cleats out of the grass and jump. You want to try to stay square to this receiver, watch his hips or watch that number, stay disciplined, and not jump, right? Not be overcommitted. So as a wide receiver, if I don't threaten a DB in either this direction, like if I don't threaten a DB inside, I don't threaten a DB outside, he will not move if he is disciplined and he's been coached. And especially when you get to a certain level, probably college ball, every single DB has been coached. Every single DB is somewhat patient. Obviously, there are some guys in college that are maybe not the most patient guys in the world. But especially at this NFL level, you got to make sure that we throw guys off the platform. So as a younger receiver, how I can apply that to my game is that if I got a high school DB and I'm threatening him outside the frame and I'm actually stepping outside of his frame, think about what that's going to do. So what this receiver does here is he kind of gives this little hesitation release, which is fine. I got no problem with that in this type of coverage. We're just kind of gathering info, seeing how this DB works. But now watch this inside foot. When he gives that jab inside, that step doesn't really go anywhere and his hips and his shoulders don't commit to the cut. There's a couple ways that you're going to get a DB to jump inside on this type of release is you actually have to threaten him here. I'm not saying you have to reach. I'm not saying you have to step way outside of his frame, but you actually have to step and threaten him. We can't just put my foot in the ground because you see, he doesn't threaten him anywhere. He's making that cut inside the DB's frame. We want to be able to step outside the DB's frame. I want to step outside of his frame, but inside of my frame. So what is exactly does that mean? When you guys throw a cut like this, when you guys throw that inside cut, you got to bring your hip, you got to bring your upper half, and you got to bring it with the cut. And we're going to show a couple examples of what that should look like here in a second. But when you guys step and you don't bring your upper half, DB ain't looking at your feet. He's not looking at your feet. He's not looking at your eyes. He's supposed to be watching right here, watching this torso. So you have to throw the hip with the cut. You actually have to sell like you were trying to cross his face. Or if you're going the other way, you, have to, you have to actually have to sell like you were going outside rather than just taking this quick step inside of his frame. So make sure, fellas, the correct footwork off the line. There's a million different releases you can use, but there's a lot. There's only one correct way to execute this type of cut and execute a move, and that's bringing your body with the cut and stepping outside of his frame, but also inside of your frame. Okay, let's watch the thing again full speed. Got to make sure, fellas, that we threaten a DB. We can't just step inside of his frame. If we step inside of that frame, that DB is going to stay patient and be able to make a play on this ball. Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at this ride from Garrett Wilson. The main thing I want to talk about here is how well he steps outside of this DB's frame, right? So the key, fellas, is like a DB, we have to threaten him. If he's not going to, he's not going to move. He's not going to bite on anything that I'm doing if I don't threaten him and if I don't try to step outside of his frame and actually sell like I'm trying to cross the face, actually sell like I'm running a fade. We got to make sure we do that. And again, it has, it comes down to pad level, comes down to body language, comes down to your hips and comes down to that step. So let's take a look at this release. So same kind of hesitation release, except the very, very, very different outcomes on this release, right? Kind of the same idea, running a fade in tight on the goal line. But now when we come off, and we do this hesitation release, right? Very similar to the last release we looked at. Now, when we throw that jab to the inside, this is the definition of stepping outside the DB's frame. You see how he's here, right? This step right here, threatens him across the face. And you see how much his upper half is turning while he's able to not turn that toe open. What so many guys will do, this is another thing you don't want to do. A lot of guys will throw that cut outside the DB's frame, but they'll open up the hip and they'll open up the toe. And when your toe is pointed this way, yeah, you stepped outside the DB's frame, maybe you got him to jump, but how do you expect to get back out this way? You can't, right? You're going to end up popping up. You're going to have this long drift out of there. And all that does is give the DB time to react. What he does such a great job of here is he steps outside the DB's frame, 
His hip goes with the cut. You throw your hip with the cut, but he's able to maintain that position where his toes stay forward, weights on the arch of his foot, and his upper body is turning separate from your lower body. This is the key spot that you have to try to get to as a receiver when you throw those cuts. Because when you can do this, step outside of his D, outside of the DB's frame, toes forward, weight on the arch, your shin angle is drifting back towards the outside where you want to go, but you sell with the upper half, that's what gets the DB to jump. That's what gets him off platform. That's the definition of stepping outside of his frame and selling the route with that upper half. DB's watching my hips. He's watching that number. So if I could threaten him across his face with the step, I could bring my upper body. I could sell with my upper body. That's going to be able to get me a lot of separation. You see, he is wide open. That's what it takes, fellas, to beat a disciplined DB, to beat any DB for that matter. We have to be threatening him. My mindset is always I'm attacking. I'm attacking vertical. I'm attacking lateral. I'm trying to get outside of his frame, inside of my frame, be explosive, sell with that upper Per half. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. Now we're going to take a look at a route from Calvin Ridley, just the opposite way now. He's going to be running a slant and he's stepping outside the DB's frame to the outside, right? So when I got a DB who's kind of head up right here and I got to cross his face on a slant, maybe I got a DB like, for example, like let's say this is the receiver, let's say this is the DB here and I got to cross his face and run a dig and he's head up and I'm trying to threaten him outside. I really got to focus on selling vertical, right? So let's look at this route from Ridley. So he does a little hesitation skip, throws this one, two, and he's able to burst out over the middle on this slant. So let's talk about it, right? So in this case, what are we trying to make a DB think? On the last two examples, we were selling like we were trying to cross the DB's face to the inside. Now in this example, we're trying to sell like we're trying to run a fade with my footwork, right? So the incorrect footwork, again, is when guys will do this, guys will do this little hesitation skip, but they never step to here. They never bring their hip. They never sell the upper half. They will just step inside the DB's frame. They'll hesitate and they'll just do like a quick one-two. They're not moving lateral. They're not attacking vertical. They just take two steps inside the frame. We can't be that guy, fellas. When you guys get into a release and you guys are throwing this thing, you really want to make sure that you are pushing. Like if it's a double up, like let's say you're on the outside and you're going like an in and out move, that in step with like the left foot, you got to push off of that left foot like Ridley does to really throw, to really throw your hip, to throw your upper body into it so you can actually sell vertical. So you can step outside the guy's frame, hips and shoulders actually sell the outside routes, actually sell the fade right here to get that DB to jump. The only way we get him to turn that gate is I have to sell it. Think about it from a DB perspective. Think about it from just like a psychological perspective. Why would this guy move if you're not threatening him over there? He's not going to move if you just take a quick step. That's not selling the route. Hips and shoulders have to commit to the route. Got to step outside his frame and to make it feel like I'm not reaching, just like what Ridley does, you got to bring your upper half. You have to push with this inside move, bring the torso with the cut to where your hip is throwing with the cut. You're throwing your hip. That's what gets him out and make sure that we're able to burst out. This is why, again, like I put an emphasis on having that toe forward and not opening up that toe because you see how much he's pushing off of that step. That's your explosion step because a lot of people can get separation. Not a lot of people can keep separation. It's very easy to sell a route, but it's not easy to sell a route, have good form, be in a balanced position so you can explode out of the break and have an efficient cut. A lot of people can make a cut. A lot of people can make this real big wide step cut, but not a lot of people can be efficient with the way they move. That's what we want to be. We want to make sure that we're stepping outside the DB's frame. We're threatening him vertical, threatening him across his face and then I'm efficient with the way I'm able to get out of this break. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. Great job by Ridley hesitating off that line, throwing to the outside and then being able to break off on this slant and keep that separation. All right guys, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, um, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments section below. I always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys as well. And again, fellas, if you want an eight week long wide receiver workout schedule with all the specific day to day drills and field exercises and gym exercises you need to do to improve your route running, press releases, speed, explosiveness, power, broken down step-by-step -step with sets and reps. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.